Alliance RX Walgreens Prime is one of the nation's largest uh, specialty healthcare providers. Uh, we are a company that is a con uh, combination of assets from Walgreens um, and Prime Therapeutic. And uh, we handle all of the uh, mail delivery for uh, home delivery, traditional home delivery patients, as well as all of the specialty medications uh, for a number of very, very large uh, health plans. So we are uh, integrated with Walgreens from the perspective of uh, service that we provide to pharmaceutical manufacturers um, and the assets that Walgreens uses for their retail specialty platform. So we work together to ensure that patients, regardless of where they enter a care model, um, are positioned to the, the right and appropriate place for fulfillment. Um, and we also support Walgreens in ensuring that the data that we acquire um, and aggregate from our central delivery model and the local retail specialty that, that Walgreens uses uh, is able to be pulled together in a meaningful way for our pharmaceutical partners. Uh, digital technologies, right, uh, span a variety of different customer engagement technologies. So the technologies themselves are quite familiar and they're often used. So this includes, you know, email notifications to go out to patients, uh, text and SMS notifications, in some cases two-way. It includes digital properties where, you know, patients can find and interact with you either on a web browser uh, from their devices um, as well as from their phones. Uh, the things that we have found most meaningful engaging with the patient are the use of SMS notifications and uh, access to these mobile uh, experiences on, on the phones themselves, uh, or any mobile device for that matter. Uh, often, you know, what we've become comfortable with as consumers are the transactional nature of, of these type interactions. So without question, engaging with the patient in this way um, has been, you know, exceedingly helpful. In the last two years, We've seen an enormous uptick and increase in patients who are willing to engage with us through that versus the more traditional telephonic means. Um, the most important thing though, however, is to create relevancy in those experiences uh, within the specialty care model. Um, so we have adapted beyond just the transactional pieces and we now have developed digital clinical engagements that, uh, that we offer to our patients. Um, they aren't the same for every single patient. So it's important to know uh, what you need to about your patient so that when they do engage with you, you can provide a relevant experience. That which we would offer to say uh, a chronic inflammatory disease patient would be very different than what we might offer to an oncology patient. But getting it right and sizing that engagement in a way that invites um, the patient to share what uh, is relevant and important to them clinically uh, and giving us an ability to use that information within the framework of our clinical standard uh, so that we can continue to support the patients where we've seen incredible success over the last few years. Um, our overall uh, utilization or engagement in the platform um, is up, you know, thousands of percents in the last two years. So percents of percents aren't good measures, but what I would tell you is that we now have over 25% of our patients who are choosing to engage with us um, on a digital platform first. Um, and when we need to, we're able to identify uh, uh, opportunities to interact um, and intervene with those patients telephonically, connect them to pharmacists, clinicians, and nurses. So the clinical standard still applies within these engagements. Importantly, though, we're seeing that an enormous percentage of these are able to fully self-serve online and achieve the convenience that they need to help them remain adherent to their medications. So, so what's unique about specialty, and, and no surprise to the audience, uh, you know, specialty, every medication comes with a tremendous amount of administrative burden that oftentimes patients aren't prepared for. Uh, there's clinical burden for sure, but the administrative burden of working through prior authorizations, coping with the high cost of copays, um, and the time it takes to even get their, their medications, particularly when uh, it's the initial fill, these are things that we are well suited to provide care to the patient uh, during very important times in their decision making process. Uh, so understanding the social determinants that might influence a patient's uh, journey, 
is, is really vital uh, for us. Um, we find that over 80% of our patients actually have something from an SDOH perspective that could influence their outcome. Um, most importantly, of course, are you know, uh, things like zip code. Understanding you know, where a patient lives is uh, a tremendous indicator of, of how prepared they might be uh, to actually bear the, the cost burden of the drugs themselves. Um, their education level is another important factor that can help us attenuate our care delivery model to meet the patient where they are. And then the final thing is just simple, basic things like access to food. Um, we use all of these to, to help uh, hone in on what a patient needs and continue to nurture them once they need to stay adherent to their therapies. In fact, um, we are right now conducting a pilot um, with Highmark, and it's very focused on uh, social determinant of health impact on an MS population. So we're very, very active in a pilot that we're running uh, with the intent of producing, you know, uh, opportunity for publication uh, on what we find through this. So this is an example where we are working together in the ecosystem to kind of focus on that surround sound care for a patient. I, I think exactly the opposite, opposite. I think it's a tremendous opportunity. I don't believe that there's confusion. Um, we, within our care model, uh, have clinicians, pharmacists, and nurses that, you know, when appropriate, engage with the patient. Um, we find that, you know, above and beyond the transactional component of what we do, uh, it's building a relationship and one based on trust and knowing the patient that really helps to drive towards appropriate outcomes. This cannot be done without coordination uh, with the prescriber and with the healthcare provider themselves. So we focus um, not just on the transactional pieces. So when we talk about digital engagement or our overall patient experience, the focus is on creating relevant and trustworthy care for the patient. Um, we within the specialty model have 11 times more access to a patient than a typical health plan does. Um, and up to three times more access than prescribers do. So we become an important forum of engagement for the patient. And it puts us in a position of obligation to not only provide care, but to coordinate care where that's necessary. Um, within our model, if there are escalations in our clinical standards and framework that, that drive us to interact with the prescriber, we do actively send alerts and coordinate um, with them. So it's very much, uh, again, getting back to the concept of surround sound, um, we are not a four wall box. We are just uh, a place, a center of gravity, if you will, that is often underutilized in trying to provide more cohesive care for a patient. 